Hi guys, welcome to Animation Juice. My name is Richard and it's Monday, which means it's time for another animation tutorial. And in this week's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do a sneaking flower sack. This is a continuation on from our flower sack series of walks that we've been doing in the previous few episodes. So let's jump in. Hi guys, so here we are in Flash. Now, as in the previous episodes, I've drawn out the keyframes that we're going to need to uh, make this walk. And if I just hit play, you'll see that already. This is just based on six drawings currently, which are uh, looping around. And if you haven't watched the previous uh, week's episode, which shows you how I'm setting up my document uh, to uh, show this to you guys, I highly recommend watching that. Um, so here is the sneaking flower sack and you can see already it works as a sneak. Now this is just using one, two, three, four, five, six keyframes right now. Uh, and the reason that I've chosen to do a sneak this week is I really want to emphasize this um, curvature of the spine and the, the contrast that you can get when you start to use reverse curves. Now what do I mean by reverse curves? Well, here is the first drawing. He's about to uh, step into the uh, into the step and you can see that if I just get a you can see that he's got this lovely curvature. His entire body is, is curving and then immediately the frame after you get the opposite curve you get he stepped into it and the curvature of his spine is now like that so we've gone from this to this and it's this night it's this lovely uh, opposing curves put next to each other that really give that change of shape and that uh, it adds so much appeal um, and vitality to your drawings to your animation and so the sneak is really an exaggerated reverse curve. Uh, it's easy; it's more easy to see in the sneak, um, but it's used throughout animation in varying degrees of subtlety. But it's there, and this is a great exercise to uh, study it, to practice it, and to try and understand when and why it's used. Again, in this step. Got this, we've got this really exaggerated and this really uh, apparent curve of the spine, all of the elements. Now this foot is sticking forward, it's reaching forward, his back is leaning back. And really what you're doing, really, um, you want to be looking for these curves uh, first and foremost. And then uh, draping or dressing these curves with the forms uh, because it's really these uh, curves and these, sh these shapes that they're making that we're animating and then immediately after we've got the opposite curve so it goes from there to there, there to there and it's, it's, it's really these curves the, and these opposing curves that are giving it uh, this great sense of vitality. So these are the only five poses that we, the key poses that we are going to need to convincingly display this sneak and like we saw earlier oops, here is it. like we saw earlier it's already working now I've not timed this out with the poses I've timed this out with my uh, frame rate so which is essentially the same thing and I've knocked it all the way back down to three frames per second so essentially each one of these poses that I've drawn is being shown for eight uh, frames, so it's it's really more of a pose per second um, thing. Each one of these poses is being shown for eight seconds. That's shown for eight seconds. That's um, that's being shown for eight frames. This is being shown for eight frames, and then this is being shown for eight frames because then in total that equals twenty four frames. And when you publish it, it's being published and. Um, watched at 24 frames per second, so 8 frames, 8 frames, 8 frames. Um, so all really I'm going to do on this one is, these, these, this, these are the main points that I've seen. We've got this 
he's about to step and really he's despite his weight he's on his tiptoes you know this is a sneak and he's really delicate you're planting your feet very slowly and carefully his arms are up in his uh, shoulders really sort of Tentatively walking through. When you hike your shoulders up like this, you sort of you're conveying attention, um, which you're, uh, you would do if you were sort of in a sneaky, stealthy mode. Everything would be taut and ready to uh, to go should someone see you, uh, because that's what sneak is. You really don't want to be seen, so everything you do is quite delicate. So, like I said, these are the main key, these are the key drawings that we need for the sneak. One, two, three, four, five. And you can see that this is sort of, these one where he's stretching, you might call this the contact position, he is just about to plant his foot. That's sort of at our midline level. So, if we think about this sort of headline as the, the gauge to see when he's down and when he's up, this is sort of about on sort of our mid position. Then we're going into our down as he plants his foot. You can see his head is just bobbed below the line. And then on the way back up again, this is the up position. Um, so it's slightly above the line and then we're back down to sort of a level with it. So there's a nice uh, up, uh, there's a nice sort of down, up, down, up motion happening here which is nice. And that, uh, that Paired with the these reverse curves, gives a really nice sense of movement, vitality, um, and it's at this stage that the success of your animation is determined. So it's really important to spend a little bit of time getting these poses, to think through these poses, um, th uh, th get into the head, get into the head of the character, and. Um, because it's really, this time spent planning is, is, is really worth it. So I'm going to in between this now, and if uh, it's something I want to point out, I'll slow it down and uh, I'll mention it, but uh, let's go. Okay, so here I've, in, I've just done straight in-betweens uh, of those initial keyframes, and literally it's just been halfway between those keys, so uh, what that looks like is, there's the original keys, and all I've done is space those out. Like I said, I was going to give those eight frames each, which I did. Uh, and then literally halfway between, so every fourth frame, I've just added a straight in between by turning this onion skin tool on and just drawing about halfway between the two. Um, there's another one. And it's you can see they're not pretty. I'm really just trying to get the shapes and the movement happening. The line work, it doesn't matter about the line work, you can clean that up later. It's the shapes, this that grey sort of mass um, working and flowing once when you play it. So what this looks like so far is, and it, you can see it's it's really starting to tighten up and this it's very fluid. A little bit blinky because the arms are blinking on and off because I'm not drawing the arms and the in-betweens but that's okay we can you can see that invisible path that they're going to take and the arms really will just follow the what the mass is doing so I'm not bothered about putting the arms in there. I just want to make sure that that grey mass the shape is working and it's reading and so far it is now so they were just literally halfway between in-betweens so all I'm going to do now is exactly what I've just done, but now I'm going to go halfway between um, the original keyframes and the in-betweens that I've just done. So, for instance, in this first one, it'll be halfway between 1 and 5, which is frame 3. So that's what I'm going to do for uh, the next bit. Just going to go halfway between each one of these keyframes at the top here, with the onion skin tool turned on so that I can draw halfway between two. Okay, so that's, I'll go and do that. Okay, so I'm now uh, in between the in-betweens, and like I say, that was literally just going in halfway between uh, 
the original key drawings and the first set of in-betweens. Uh, and this is what it looks like. You can see the line work is flicking about but the uh, grey mass itself is moving smoothly across the canvas in a nice, sneaky, uh, purposeful way. Which is going well. So all that is left to do now is just now is the point. Now that the movement is pretty much there, uh, is to just go in and tidy him up, tidy him up a little bit, just to um, fix a bit that flickering, and add in the arms. Um, so that is what I'll do now. And this one should be called done. Okay, guys. So here I have the uh, finished sneaking flower sack it is um, the line work is still pretty rough but animation really isn't about animating lines it's about animating the shapes and the masses and for me it's working as a sneak and then you can take this and do whatever you want with it you can go and clean it up more if it's for a more finished um, presentation animation or you can go in and uh, a vector you know make it into the uh, a nice vector character or whatever you want to do with it this the, we've achieved the motion of the sneak as applied to a flower sack and I think it's pretty successful but all of this was achieved really in those first six drawings uh, all of the extra stuff was just to smooth it out a little bit and make it easier to watch I think the arms may be the current points are slightly jerky, but you know, I think it's achieved its purpose. So that is how you create a sneaking flower sack. That's it for this episode, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's shown you how the sneaking flower sack is created. Remember, it all just started with those six key positions. If you can get those right, uh, really the rest is just tracing the in-between. So. If you like this episode, make sure to let me know by leaving a like and a comment and make sure to subscribe below to stay up to date with all the latest videos uh, as they come out. That's it for this week. Have a great week guys and I'll see you later.